so in this class we're going to talk about what is a population regression function right so we will formally define what is a population regression function and we will also talk about whether the model which we are considering is that linear in variables or it is linear in parameters so so these are the two things which we are going to talk about in this recording please have a look at this so we will assume uh, by taking a, an example so suppose uh, there are 60 families so suppose there are 60 families and you have a data for each family about what about their uh, weekly income and about their weekly consumption expenditure so let's say weekly income is the independent variable let's say that's x and uh, weekly consumption expenditure weekly consumption expenditure is y which is the dependent variable right so these 60 families they are divided into the subpopulation so the population is of 60 families these 60 families are divided into subpopulation of 10 income groups right so 60 families okay. 10 income groups right and the weekly consumption expenditure for each family, for each income group is new, is noted, right? So you understand what we are trying to do. What we have done is that we have taken up these 60 families and we have divided them into 10 income groups. For each income group, we are noting down their consumption expenditure for each family, for each group, right? And weekly consumption expenditure. is noted right so what do you have you have the 10 fixed values of income x is the income x is the independent variable so you have 10 fixed values of income one thing right and for each fixed value of income you have the range of consumption expenditure why because uh, for income group of hundred dollars per week there are families who are going to spend 90 they're going there are families who are going to spend 95 there are families who are going to spend 80 and so on so you have the range of the consumption expenditure values so we have against each of x values against each of x values right so what is happening here is this that you have for x1 x2 x3 and so on to x10 these are the independent variable and they are written like this and then you have the dependent variable y which is the weekly consumption expenditure for each of these right so for each of these right and then what happens is that uh, what you get I'll just say for the income group of X1, you have the range of weekly consumption expenditure values. You will take a total of that, right? So total weekly consumption expenditure for each subgroup, right? So for each subgroup, we have found this out. And so on. We found this out, right? And then what happens is that once you have the total weekly consumption expenditure for X1, right? Then you can, you can divide that by the number of families in X1 to get the mean of or the, or the conditional mean of the weekly consumption expenditure. You got this. So how do you get mean? You, you get mean by dividing the weekly consumption expenditure upon the number of families so that you get the mean consumption expenditure or mean weekly consumption expenditure for this particular group. You get the mean consumption expenditure for this particular group and so on. 
So what you get is E Y given X. So this is the conditional mean. Conditional mean of Y. So why we are calling this as conditional mean of Y? So you will be getting conditional mean of of the weekly consumption expenditure for income group X1. So it is conditioned upon that you are calculating it for income group X1. Conditional mean, conditional weekly consumption expenditure for the income group of X2. So it is conditioned upon this guy X2 and so on. Right? And so on. So you get these. Right. Now, if you want to draw this in terms of a graph, We want to draw this in a terms of, in terms of a graph. So this is the dependent variable. Weekly consumption expenditure. This is the independent variable. Weekly income. Right. And what you get is here is this. So you have x1, you have x2, and so on too. You have x10. Right. So for each income group, so the, for the income group of X1, you have the different range of consumption expenditure values. For income group of X2, you have different range of consumption expenditure values and so on. For the income group of X10, you have the range of consumption expenditure values, right? And for income group of X1, you have also calculated the conditional mean of the consumption expenditure values. Condition upon what? Condition upon this, uh, this uh, that you are calculating it for X1. You're calculating for the income group X1 and so on. Right? And these, uh, these uh, circles which I have drawn, these are the conditional mean. So do you uh, analyze one thing that for each income group, don't you think there is enough variability in the consumption expenditure? No. So there are, there are, in, uh, there are families for the income group of X1 who are, whose consumption expenditure is less. There are families in the income group of X1 whose consumption expenditure is more. Right. So there is a considerable variation in the consumption expenditure for each income group, right? The first point. Income group, right? But you can also see this that as your income is increasing from X1 to X2 to X3 and so on to X10, the average weekly consumption expenditure, it is also rising. No? This also you, you're seeing that yes, there is a variability, but as weekly income is increasing, weekly consumption expenditure is also rising. But as income rises, right? Uh, okay. Now, achha, you tell me one more thing. You have calculated what the conditional mean is. Conditional mean is what? Dip, assuming that, uh, or you can say right like, like this, given that income is X1, fixed income is X1, what is the average of the weekly expenditure, uh, weekly consumption expenditure of the families for the income group of X1? So it is conditioned upon that you are calculating it for the income group of X1. So it's a conditional mean. What would be the unconditional mean? So if I ask the question, what is the average consumption expenditure of all families together, of all 60 families? So that is an unconditional mean. It is not conditioned upon anything. You with me? So please write this. Unconditional mean of all 60 families. So you understand the difference between the conditional and the unconditional mean. So this is what is EY. Conditional mean is EY given X. EY conditioned upon X. Right? That is the conditional mean. 
so that is one thing second thing is that now let us define what is uh, the uh, what is your uh, population regression function i am sure that you must have guessed till now that if you join these conditional means using a line what you get is the population regression function so what you have done is that you have the locus of all of these conditional means is what the population regression function is because you're one you're calculating it for the entire population in the next class i'll talk about the sample regression function because you know what i mean it is not so easy to find out the data for the entire population so this is just an hypothetical example but you cannot take up the entire population so if you cannot take up the entire population you will have to find out the sample of that population which is going to represent the population and then you will do the similar exercise to get the sample regression function here since you are taking up the entire population it becomes the population regression function and how do you get that you get it by connecting all the conditional means together so the locus of the all uh, locus of all the conditional means is what the population regression function is right so how do we write this let's write this properly what is the uh, population regression function i'm assuming that you are writing everything side by side and you're not uh, rushing through it the more you rush through studies less you will understand you make that thing very very sure right so population regression it is simply a locus of the conditional explanatory variables the fixed values of the explanatory variables right that is what the population regression function is right so acha you know this that what is this guy what is this this is the conditional mean of the consumption expenditure given x1 what is this this is the conditional mean of the consumption expenditure given x2 and so on right so you can see that these conditional means they are the function of xi no these conditional means are the function of xi it is a function of x1 this is a function of x2 this guy is the function of x10 and so on so it's a function of xi and the locus of these conditional mean is nothing but what your population regression function is that is what the population regression function is because this is the this is conditional upon xi right and uh, this is the function of xi and uh, initially you know what i mean and if i want to assume what is the uh what i mean how this fxi is going to look like what is going to be the shape of this let's say i'm going to assume that it's a linear function of xi i can assume like this beta 1 plus beta 2 xi bhai yahi to hota hai na how do you write koi bhi fx function ko tum kaise likhte ho you can write it like just x you can write like 2x you can write like 5 plus 2x and so i'm i'm just giving an example so let's say i'm writing it this way beta 1 plus beta 2 xi right so initially we may assume that uh, e by xi e by given xi is the linear function of xi initially i am assuming right that is what the population regression function is and what are these beta 1 and beta 2 these are unknown known as regression coefficients
known as regression coefficients. Beta 1 is the intercept term. And beta 2 is the slope term. I hope you know this from your 11th class straight lines. You write it like this now? Or let me just write it like this. So what is this C? This is the intercept of the straight line. What is this M? That is the slope of the straight line. So it is like that also. Beta 1 plus beta 2 x n. Now, whether this is linear in parameters or linear in uh, in variables. So we are considering in our classical linear regression model, the model should be linear in parameters. Beta 1, beta 2 should be linear. Beta 1 square, beta 2 square not allowed. Root of beta 1 not allowed. Not like that. But x size could be nonlinear also. You with me? So if I say your uh, your uh, EY given XI right so it is uh, linear in parameters beta 1 beta 2 plus linear in variables xi right similarly or uh, this is linear in parameters but non-linear in variables. You with me? Right? But non-linear in variables. Now you, uh, you have to understand one thing that when we talk about the classical linear regression model, we are only concerned with linear in parameters. Right? Matlab, this is not allowed. Although this is linear in variables, but this is non-linear in parameters. This is not allowed. Right? We are not studying this model. This is allowed, no problem with this, right? Till the point the model is linear in parameters, it is allowed. But it should be, it can be nonlinear in uh, variables. And we will talk about the nonlinear variables or nonlinear uh, variable model also in the course later on. So this is what I want to do. Huh? So I, uh, I've written my notes also, but uh, I think this I've already explained that uh, the model should be linear in parameters. It may or may not be linear in variables. Okay? So this is what I wanted to do in this class. I hope it was useful to you. Thank you, Buddha.